Just as this month will serve as a look back at where we began, it may also come to showcase things left behind, like some highly requested guiding guides, for example. Chances are I'll show how to bonk almost every mob atop the head with the utmost efficiency, but something tells me that the bosses of the constant may just be the priority. So, let's kill ourselves every overworld boss with relative ease, yes? Now, these segments to follow are not fully in-depth boss guides, everyone. They're simple previews of the many different bouts you'll find with these very bosses. Specific preparation, gear, timetables, locations, etc. are left off the table, more or less. And we ain't really out here to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with no damage being taken every time, either. All of that said, it should always be hand bats or higher to make things more manageable. And know that speed is your ally. First up, the one-eyed menace himself. Considering that Klaus will very likely be your first big bad encounter, I can understand if a spear or tentacle spike is all you have at that time. But if so, that still kinda sucks. Cause as far as kiting them goes, it's bait out his freeze attack, run in and get two to three hits yourself, skedaddle the heck out of there, and repeat. So that's easy enough. The sucky part stems from his minus 400 per minute sanity drain coupled with the actual length of the fight, even with high damage weapons in play. The boss comes easy with the proper pattern, but you must be prepared to combat the inevitable cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs that is gonna be going on in your world. But how does a potential speed boost factor into this wintry battle? Well, it will not only quote unquote guarantee your safety while dodging, but perhaps also net an additional hit if you got the guts and know how. Play it safe and the speed will get you that three hits each time. And the speed will even get you out of the negative sanity auras a little faster, which can be very nice. Mama Moosey or Goosey honks her way onto the scene now. If your game isn't a steaming pile of laggy crap after the Salty Dog update, then kiting her involves dodging the mighty range of her neck, netting three hits yourself, then running out of there. Speed isn't quite necessary, but oh boy, it's gonna prove very useful due to, as I said, her range. However, the two biggest issues with this fight are her disarming ability and her proclivity to simply hopping away from you. For the disarming, simply holding spacebar will snatch your weapon out of thin air nine times out of ten, so that's just a skill that you can learn with time. But to keep her from running away during the fight, you just gotta keep her close to her nesting spot. Honestly, Muskus is one of the easiest fights and easiest kites in all of Don't Starve. It's what follows her death that still gives me nightmares every time I witness it. From one of the easiest to arguably the easiest, Antlion. Of course, you'll need a fully cool thermal to begin the bout, and as far as that goes, it's a prolonged game of Ring Around the Rosy. All you should be doing is constantly watching the ground around you as you hold down F or whatever attack button works for you, as we will literally be dancing circles around her in order to manipulate the sand spikes into forming, well, Again, a circle. By the time you make it around her, the initially formed spikes should be gone or about to be. Then, just repeat the process. Speed will absolutely help during this fight. And I want you guys to know something. Not even just for this fight. If you need to abandon one or two patterns for your safety or to get back on track, do it. No fight pattern is ever truly perfect at the end of the day. As this is Don't Starve we're talking about, this game is always out to get you no matter your skill level. Something bad will happen in one of your attempts. Our fluffy pal Berger awakens from hibernation only to be immediately murdered by our meat. Glorious. Without speed, you'll be getting but two hits before he swipes at ya. So get them feetsies moving to capitalize on three hits per meat smacking session. Know this, every three attacks he does will end up resulting in an area of effect slam that should obviously be avoided for many reasons. But immediately following that, he'll swipe again. So please, 
please be smart and bait that follow-up attack before resuming your murder spree against nature's beautiful creatures. Oh, and by the way, Bearger 2 shares a disarming mechanic, only his comes after every hit he lands on ya. So, don't get hit. Did you know that tree guardians are technically bosses? Well, they are. And they kinda loosely fit the category, considering their lackluster mechanics, looks, feel, and fight. But we gotta talk them anyways, folks. Bait out their swing, approach the sentient tower of timber, get three to four hits in yourself, then flee the tree. With speed and skill, you can actually land four to five hits on them, but I would not do that if I was you. Just a brief note, if you've got two or even three of them on your behind, you must get them on the same exact attack pattern. Do so and you'll still be able to do your same attack pattern on all three of them and it will work wonders, so keep that in mind. Did you know times two, spider queens also classify as bosses and don't starve together, so once again, we'll have to cover them quickly. Now, the fight you see before you is by no means a clean and proper fight against the queen, but know that it is highly advised that you murder her spider spawns first before returning to the classic kiting pattern of three hits, then retreat. The spiders that'll spawn are much faster than her, so use that to your advantage, obviously. Smack her dead with your meat and be rewarded with the sticky white stuff. Wait. That's not what I meant. Hold up, you mean to tell me that Dragonfly, a big bad raid boss, is Kiteable Beard? Sure is, friend, but you'll need speed guaranteed. Now, chances are you'll get hit when initially aggroing her and the re-engagements that follow her spawn phase, but the biggest thing to note is that she cannot be flying or moving towards you when she goes for an attack. She does so, and it's a for sure hit on ya. But remember to get six hits, then get your butt out of there fast. Too early or too late, and the pattern will fail, guaranteed. And since the game fails to register hits occasionally, I actually prefer to count to six seconds myself, then leave on the chance that one of them doesn't actually connect. This is certainly not a preferred method, I'm sure, but man, it's kind of crazy to think that a raid boss such as D-Fly can actually be kited by our little selves. But sadly, the fun ends there, as Bee Queen, yet another raid boss that calls the constant home, is not one to kite. I don't care whether you have a wall set up, a pen and loop set up, nothing. Bee Queen just isn't kiteable, folks. The grumbles will catch up to you eventually and grow in unmanageable numbers and will get faster as time goes on. And heck, her honey trail slows you down so much that speed does squat for the most part. It's just not worth the trouble. But I did happen to lie to you, folks. The fun train keeps choo-chooing along with our friend, Evil Santa. Now, avoiding his hits coming from the deer or that of his ranged spells is solely up to kinda chance and quick thinking. But as for cutting him, it's baiting his claw attack, getting three hits in at max, backing off, then potentially repeating the process. Unless, of course, he uses one of those fire or ice attacks. The Claws boss fight is one of fluidity, and it's why it's one of my favorites across all of Don't Starve. You'll be constantly moving around, trying to time and bait attacks, and then picking one to make your move itself. It's a lovely battle in the snow. Now, his second phase is the real trouble. He'll now have another ranged melee attack that will be better avoided with speed, and my advice is to bait this out, bait out his follow-up swings that will always come, get three in yourself once more, then wait a rotation of attacks till after his spells. This second phase is the one that you really gotta remain vigilant and choose your attacks wisely. To be honest, simply taking a second phase is the better option, especially if you kited the first one well enough. But there you have it everyone, a guide on kiting almost every overworld boss and don't starve together. Once more, none of these showcases were perfect in their presentation, as every fight and every individual fighting is different. This video simply serves to inform of kiting patterns for those less fortunate to approach these bouts with unsubstantiated confidence in their combat prowess. In simplest terms, this is for folk who suck at fighting and don't starve together at the bare minimum levels. But thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.